Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And we're going to talk about something called the cap and the role that it plays in producing severe thunderstorms. Uh, and this effect can show up just about anywhere, especially uh, uh, east of the Rocky Mountains, but uh, it's uh, most common uh, right through the middle part of the country. And then there's a secondary maximum east of the Appalachians, uh, which uh, can contribute to severe weather here in the Carolinas. So let's go on ahead and, and take a look at this. And uh, let's cap off the week with an explanation, shall we? All right. So this is my poor man's version of uh, the middle part of the country where you've got the mountains off here to the left. Okay, so you've got elevated terrain. And then you come down off the mountains and you move into the Great Plains where it's fairly flat. Okay. Now, because the, and, and we've talked about this before, where it turns out that the air is not really heated directly by the sun, that the sun's rays are largely transparent uh, or the atmosphere is largely transparent to those rays. And so they go right on down to the ground. They heat the ground. The ground absorbs it and then re-radiates it at a longer wavelength. And that's what actually heats the air. So the sun indirectly is the heat source, but the ground is actually the a thing that actually heats the air above it initially by conduction or direct contact, and then as the air begins to mix, that warmth begins to mix higher and higher up into the atmosphere. So you have this elevated heat source, and so as this air is carried eastward by the prevailing westerly winds, the air temperature at that elevation, and we're talking maybe about eight or 10,000 feet, is much warmer than it would be if that effect was not going on, okay? The air would normally not be that warm at that elevation, but because of this effect where we're heating the terrain and then that air is being carried out over the Rockies, then it is much warmer. So what are we left with then? So this cap actually creates what we call a pressure cooker environment where out in the Great Plains, you can still be plenty warm and plenty humid, okay? But above that warm, humid air is this elevated heat layer from the mountains. We actually call it an elevated mixed layer, okay? And so the air in this warm, humid air mass tries to rise, but in many, many cases, it does not become buoyant because the air up here is so warm, okay? So it ends up being cooler than the environment that it's trying to rise into, and so it stops rising, and the air goes right back down, and nothing happens. So it's warm, it's humid, you think, oh my gosh, this is a perfect scenario for thunderstorms, but nothing happens. The sky just remains clear, and everything is very, very quiet. Now, Above that elevated mixed layer, the air is still very, very cold. And because it's warmer than it normally would be at around eight or 10,000 feet, the lapse rate in temperature from this layer up to this layer is really, really steep, okay? And when you have steep lapse rates, then as a result, when the air starts to, 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 to rise, if it can get through that cap, then it's just going to explode. It's going to be very, very buoyant. It's going to be much less dense than the environment that it's in, and the air is just going to shoot up like crazy, okay? So the whole key here is what has, has to happen to get rid of that cap. Well, if a weather system comes along to lift the air and cool it a little bit, okay, that can do it. Or if the air near the surface becomes even more warm and more moist, if you will, that may give it just enough of an upward momentum to get through that cap. But the bottom line is, if that cap goes away, then kaboom, okay? All of a sudden, all bets are off on how strong these storms can get. Now, there was a case that I remember very, very well, and... It was back May 31st of 1985, and one of my best friends from Penn State, uh, Ben Gelber, who is a, has been a meteorologist at WCMH in Columbus, Ohio, almost 43 years. I think July will be the 43rd uh, anniversary of his uh, arrival there. Uh, he was getting married on the 1st of June, and so I was going up there for the wedding. And so I left Raleigh on Friday, and I actually stayed over at, uh, at a little hotel in Bluefield, West Virginia, which is about the halfway mark. And uh, I turned on the Weather Channel, and, and they were talking about tornadoes in Ohio and Pennsylvania, but I didn't think all that much of it, to be honest with you. And then I get up the next morning, and the newspaper headline says, 80 die in tornado outbreak. 
And so I'm sitting there going, oh, geez, you know, obviously this was, you know, way worse than just your standard run of the mill tornado. And so um, I basically, you know, did some research and I got up to Ohio, you know, that Saturday and, uh, and talked to Ben about this. And the interesting thing is, is that it was perfectly sunny until I believe like four or five in the afternoon, not a cloud in the sky or barely a cloud in the sky. And then all of a sudden, within an hour, there were tornadoes on the ground. And this is the visible satellite imagery from that afternoon where all of a sudden you see these storms just explode out of nowhere. In fact, a lot of the cloud cover that was there earlier in the day actually dissipated and it became just about crystal clear and then all of a sudden the cap broke and the storms exploded and actually I think the final death toll was 89 uh, with the tornadoes in Ohio and also in Pennsylvania that night. So it was a tragic night, uh, but it certainly was a good example of how this cap allowed all of that warm, moist air in the low levels to build and build and build and build because it couldn't mix upward and get any dry air to come down with it. And so it just sat there. It's like overinflating a tire. And then all of a sudden, when that cap breaks or the pressure inside that tire becomes so great, it just explodes, and that's exactly what happened during that case, and you can document many other of these uh, as you look back through history across the country. So the end result is this is most common east of the Rocky Mountains, but we have seen examples of this elevated mixed layer that can show up well east of the Rockies, and in this case, it was all the way to Ohio and Pennsylvania. And there's a little bit of a secondary maximum east of the Appalachians. It's not as big of an effect as it is east of the Rockies because our mountains aren't as high as theirs are, but there still is a little bit of a secondary maximum, and that can contribute to severe weather in the Carolinas in certain situations. So that's it for today. Uh, thought you might find that interesting. That's bonus weather video number two for this week. Uh, the daily update today was a little abbreviated and in text form with the forecast for tonight, tomorrow, and the seven day. That's all there. Uh, just that I had a few things happen today which uh, limited my time, and so I was not able to do everything that I normally do. But hopefully that's okay, and uh, I will be back with you on Monday. And I think the weekend overall is going to be pretty good from a recreational standpoint. Most of the weekend should be rain-free. So I hope you get a chance to get out and enjoy it. Okay, folks, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again on Monday. Take care.